Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Patches or expansions, more options or more power across or up. These are the two ways in which MMOs progress and MMORPGs are quite unique games in that they must progress one way or another. They have to build and hold a player base in the long term and the vast majority of them only go about this in one of the two ways. It's a bit easier to reinforce that sense of progression and the gradual power gain which has long been a centric measure of character development in the genre but a few in between break the mold and have tried the other path. You've probably only played one of the two, well a lot anyway. For me the idea of vertical or horizontal progression covers two separate yet equally important areas, those being for the players, i.e. your character. How does a game get you to progress? What defines your ability to go from objective A to B and how does that change over time? How do things like gear, levels or additional systems factor in? And secondly, the game. How is new content introduced to keep the voracious player base entertained? Smaller portions through patches frequently or long periods of drought followed by a massive expansion. For this we'll go over two games which I'm pretty familiar with that handle things very differently and for me show the separation between the two different design intentions as well as the positives and negatives that come out of them for the player base. These will be World of Warcraft and RuneScape, though there are plenty more examples of both of these and I'm sure you'll be able to relate certain gameplay traits to other titles that you've played over the years. Let's start with vertical power game games, simply because there are a lot more of them out there on the MMORPG market. The system in essence is simple, progression always goes up, vertically if you will. As your character progresses they will shed old armour and weapons at a rapid rate. A level 1 character will be weaker than a level 20 or a level 30. They will have worse gear as well as less abilities at their disposal. This wasn't always so strictly the case either for World of Warcraft in earlier expansions like vanilla when stats such as hit or crit were entire percentages some items ended up being way too good for way too long because of this design decision. Moreover there was an absolute plethora of trinkets which had niche uses in PvP or PvE or just for plain fun or to catch others off guard. These ideas gradually eroded over time as well when main stat became your key scaling in Cataclysm and for certain by Warlords of Draenor when many of the extra stats were cut so that gear could be changed between spec with a near one size fits all formula, a rather severe side effect of the change which hasn't ever quite gone away. In vertical progression it's like your character is climbing a pyramid of gear and levels and each tier they go up there is a wider and wider array of content below you which keeps shrinking until there are only a handful of known areas of content which will be able to funnel you further upgrades. This often makes it seem as though many areas of the game are pointless or carry no worth as they cannot provide progression that matches the best methods. Crafting has often been a casualty of this in WoW. Or as I like to say, the design intention is all road to lead to raid. This has even been the case for PvP gearing during many expansions. So whilst on a player level individuals are climbing a ladder, on a game level vertical progression often feels like a scorched earth policy that anything older than about two years. Vertical progression games have patches during expansions of course but they centre themselves around huge new expansion launches. Loads of new content, new classes, dungeons, raids, pvp, new systems, all of the new things. An expansion is a chance to dramatically change things which didn't work out during the previous one, a justification to redesign and remodel and most importantly it's like a fresh hype phase for the game. MMORPGs draw hype and hope for their fans like absolutely nothing else. Even the most sketchy MMO can get a decent crowd in with a new launch. Even the re-release re-release of classic WoW saw a huge boom in players when it first dropped. Whatever it may be, a start alongside everybody else on a new server with a new continent with new secrets and new dungeons and new raids and everything else that an MMO entails gets people hyped to buy the expansion or renew their sub or in WoW's case, both. Shadowlands on its launch was the fastest selling PC game of all time believe it or not and despite everything at Blizzard you can bet whatever they put out next is going to be big. It just works. As for the pros of a vertical progression system, expansions are always big. They get lots of players back into the game and they're exciting. The feeling of early game progression is rapid. You go from zone to zone, acquiring new abilities, gears, and you see your numbers go up linearly. It's a simple formula to understand and to execute. Get levels, acquire items, get more power. 
easy. On the con side, everything you've done during the past expansion is now completely useless. Unless you're keeping it for sentimental value or because it's a cosmetic, you're going to do the bi yearly cleaning of the bank and the bags of all the junk, which you just can't keep around anymore. Old content is now quote unquote dead unless it's worked into the future, which WoW have done in time with things like looking for dungeon and time walking. In fact, vertical progression is so aggressive today in World of Warcraft that older tiers are now dead as soon as a new one opens. Who is still going to Castle Nafria apart from LFR? I can't imagine that feels too good as a developer, knowing your hours of work have such a short lifespan, and it can be hard to get back into after a break during a new expansion. The majority of what you know will likely have been changed, Perhaps this is just MMORPGs in general though. So that's vertical progression. What is horizontal then? Horizontal is mainly based around one idea, choice. On a player level, upgrades certainly exist, but so do side grades or situational items. When faced with a combat encounter, you may opt for more defense from your gear and abilities or offense or hybrid. Horizontal games often let you choose different roles as you wish as well. How do you want to tackle this specific encounter? What seems best with the options you have at your disposal? And as you gain power, which you will, the highest tier of armor or weapons available aren't always necessarily the best, if they exist that is. For example, in old school RuneScape there is void armor. When worn as a full set, it gives you a bonus to your accuracy and damage, depending on what attack style you're using. Yet it only requires very low stats to actually equip baseline. Even in end game content, some players will opt to use this where they just don't need defense because it's going to allow them to put out some really high accurate damage. Another example of this for a weapon is arc light. This weapon baseline is absolutely terrible. Its stats are less than level 30 weaponry, but when specifically used against demons, it becomes one of the best weapons in the entire game as it gains massive bonuses. This is what horizontal is all about. Yes, there are better and worse in some cases, but there is also sometimes better and sometimes worse depending on many factors. On a game level, horizontal games often make more sense to do things via patches instead of major expansions, though some of them do this all the same. On the pro side of this, there should be at least more frequent balancing and updates. Older content can still remain relevant for niche uses, such as the way you obtain void armor from a mini game called Pest Control. There will be better long-term familiarity with the game even after breaks as you've built up this library of knowledge on both the older and newer items which aren't going to necessarily change enormously every so often. On the con side, there's power creep on the existing gear and item level cap, which will start to exist. RuneScape 3 is up to tier 95 weaponry now. They only have four more levels to play with unless they start raising the combat level caps in the future. There will always be a best way to do certain objectives, which can lead to dead or obsolete content. For example, where there's a choice of three ways of doing the same thing, in RuneScape they often try to create several different ways to do that thing and make them designed for different people. Objective A might give a lot of XP but little gold, Objective B might do the opposite, and Objective C might require very little attention or input but gradually work you towards the same goal. It all depends. Finally there can be complaints, who would have thought that in MMOs, or a lack of content for certain types of players. People may say we need more end game or more median game or a better new player experience. In vertical progression games it's accepted this kind of thing will happen with the expansion. I think in conclusion you can say both have good points to them and bads as well. More games still do vertical though as I think it's just easier to understand. Horizontal whilst having choices are often considerably more involved. For example RuneScape 3 has a built-in function where you can wiki things because trust me you will spend half your time on RS wiki if you get into the game because there are so many directions you can take your character and no clearly defined path. Vertical progression games can also sell you expansion packs instead of rolling out updates as several different patches over a period of several months or years. Imagine if each individual patch had to be paid for to play. Then again would you rather pay $30 to play the latest patch or think about the $15 you pay per month over the last five months to play the current patch. Hold on, we can even put a price on patches if we do this. Battle for Azeroth had three major content patches in 25 months total. 
No, really, it did. 8.1 was December 11th, 2018. 8.3 was January 14th, 2020. So if we do $15 times 25 months divided by three, that is $125 per major content patch. You know what? Bring on paying per patch, actually. Maybe we'd get better games out of it too if they could justify even half of that price tag. That's nearly a new AAA game straight off the shelf. Personally, though, I don't think I have a strong preference either way towards vertical or horizontal progression. What I can say as somebody who does revisit games time and again, horizontal progression can often feel quite a bit more overwhelming when making that return. The content just isn't quite so clearly laid out in front of you, and well, I guess that's just how they're designed to be. That's about all that I thought I'd have a talk about it and the differences between the two ways of doing things. Let me know your experiences with both and how you've got on with them. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I shall see you on the next one very soon.